When when you guys were, were on a major label, right? Um, how would you compare that to um, to your experiences on your you know putting out your own music? Um, what was it like in terms of um, just in terms of control, I suppose, um, and in terms of uh, you know were you? Seriously? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, it's the double-edged sword. Yeah, were you guys actually able to create your own sound? Uh, when you're on the major label, or, or yeah, we did at first, and then it, it, it's a long, ugly story. But the first record we did, we the only record we did in Columbia was with the whole team that we got along with. They signed us, and when we went on tour for you know however a year and a half, we came back, and the whole team was changed. So at that point, it kind of became like we were the bastard child, and and it really was. At that point, it was very tough. Yeah, they, so, did, they didn't have anything to do with our sound. We had it before we got there. Yeah. So, I kind of... Yeah. As far as the, uh, the labels, the indie thing, I mean, the labels definitely serve a great purpose. They have a big marketing uh, budget, and if they use it correctly, which they almost rarely do, um, it can be great. And for a little while, it was great for us. And then, um, you know, it, there's the reality is... God, I'm going to talk a lot. I'm sorry, guys. It's yeah. all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reality is a business. It's not a business per se. You know, you have some guys who are actually business people and you have other guys who really just want free t-shirts and CDs. And those guys who really want free t-shirts and CDs are the guys who are supposed to be running your career. And it gets a little sketchy. So, What advice would you have for bands that may be on indie labels right now or putting out their own stuff um, for when or if they move to, to bigger labels? I don't even think there's a need to move to a bigger label. Depends on the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Read your contract. Yeah, read the contract and, and actually read it, understand it, and then read it again, like every three months. Because there were things in our contract that we realized after the fact that had they been in, it probably would have been better for us. You know, So just make sure you're informed and uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to ask for stuff. And don't be afraid to throw a little tantrum if you don't get it. What are your guys' uh, aspirations going forward now? Because you, you guys just got together a couple months ago, right? Yeah. Regrouped. Yeah. And um, what are your plans for uh, for 2011 and going forward? Songs and more songs. And yeah, what are your keep plans? <laughs> it's fun time again. Yeah, yeah that's it. Having fun and being in control of our own music again. We'll just write together. Fun. Yeah, that was the, that was the pitch. <laughs> Why do you want to do it? Because it'd be fun. It'd be fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's how we, that's how we started it together. <laughs> and if you could change one thing about the indie music scene in general, anything at all, what would you change? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I'd change the thing. It's been doing its own thing for such a long time. I mean, it's changing music. Indie, right? I mean, the majors were huge, and now they're like not the biggest sought-after commodity in music anymore. Everybody wants to be on indie because they they have a little bit more heart and soul into it than the majors. More respect for the indie musicians from their peers, clubs, whatever, and not being drugged through the ground like you're nobody. Mainly those that are putting their time and yeah. effort. Yeah, interesting. Judging the art for the art that it is, rather than what label you're on or how many records you've made that week. Speaking of which, Nathan, this song, we have to go here, Nathan. There's a lot of great artists out there that just aren't getting that respect.